Okay, hi guys, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, we'll be trying to look at time series data. Okay, we'll try to handle uh, time series data using certain special functions from pandas and some other libraries as well, like date time. So often we get data in the industry where uh, the data is dependent on time. So we have probably a weekly, monthly, daily level data, which we need to analyze. And such data are called as time series data because they are dependent on the time uh, when it happens. Okay, So let's quickly get started and show you, give some examples of how to deal with time series data. And Pandas itself has its own date time handling characteristics. Just like in Excel sheets, when you have a date column, you can you know set, set it to different formats, right? Uh, month, year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds. So Python also has a capability to understand time, uh, you know, the way it is. So we'll try to see how we can make Python understand uh, time formats. Okay. So first, let's try to read the data set. We need dot read underscore CSV. R. We'll keep it inside data sets folder. All the codes will be, uh, you know, uh, given to you uh, via the description. The description will have the links uh, to the codes in GitHub. You can download it and the data set as well. So let's look at the data set. If you look here. This is the time series data, right? Let's try to see. So this is my time series date time and it's count. Okay, we try to just simply see how we uh, use date time objects. Time series. Okay, maybe there's maybe some mistake with the spelling. Time underscore series. Okay, great. Right. So now if I do df dot head. Okay, now if I look at the D types, data types, you can see here ID is int, of course, count is integer again, great. Date time is of nature object, which means that probably this is a string. Now, if I want to extract the first observation now, so DF of say date time of zero. This way also I can do it, or I can simply do. You already know df dot lock of zero comma date time. Same thing. Okay, now if you look at this, this seems to be a string because if I do type of, let me save it in say a, and if I do type of a, I get a string, right? But I want Python to understand it in the time format that, okay, this is day, eight is August, then 2012 is the year. Right? For me to enable Python to understand this, we have to use a function which is called as pandas to underscore date time. So what I'll do here, I have this much information with me, right? So let me create another column, a new column, instead of replacing it, date time underscore format, okay? And I'll use pd.2 underscore date time. That is the function name. And if you do not remember, you can easily Google it, no problem. And I simply have to put it like this. Now let's look how. Okay, so what happened here? Date time formats. Oh, this has to be date time, right? Let's see if this works. Okay. Now let's try to see. Now you can see here the format has changed to year, month, and day. Right, and this has become hour, minutes, and seconds. So now, if I do df dot d types, you see date time was object as before. Date time format is actually now a date time sixty four bit time format. These are time data, time object. I can call it. So if I do a similarly df dot log of zero comma date time format, it's a timestamp now. It's no longer a string. Right. And if I save it in say B and do simply do type of B. See, it's pandas timestamp. This timestamp is from pandas. Similarly, we have other functions, uh, other modules that I would say, date time, okay, which basically uh, is not from pandas, it's from a separate uh, entity. So if I say date time dot date time dot today. So this this it gives me today's date, right? And if I save it in C, 
So here, date time is the main model. Inside it, there is again another library with the same name, which is called as date time. And then we have today as the function, right? Attribute. So if I run this and if I do type of C, see, this is date time dot date time. Both of them are time related objects only. It's just that they are from different modules. And the way we work with them will be slightly different. The syntaxes will slightly change. Okay. So now we're getting back to pandas date time since we're handling pandas now. So you see here df dot head. So this is a dear type. What information can we extract from it? Okay. Now can I extract the information, say year from it? Let's see. Equal to say uh df of date time format dot dt dot apply lambda function. And in each of these rows, let me show you a concept now. Now, from this date time format, can I extract more information out of it? Like the year, month, day separately, what kind of date was, was it a Sunday or Tuesday? Was it a weekend? All those information, let's try to see. So if I say B, this was from the pandas, uh, if I'm not wrong, right? It was from, ah, it was from pandas date time, okay. Now, if I do B dot year, see, I get the year, which is 2012. Similarly, if I do bd dot b dot sorry month b dot day or let's say day day year yeah right so which means that I can extract the year month day from each of these observations and I want if I want to repeat the logic across all the observations I use a function which is called as the lambda function very simple to use let's do it let's create a new column df of year is equal to df of the state time format, okay? And then do dot apply lambda x is to, x now stands for all the observations, okay? X stands for you know, all the observations, it's like an iterator, just like we do in loop for i in this list, right? That's how it works, x dot here. Similarly, I can do the same thing for month and day as well. This becomes months and this becomes day. Right? Let me see if this works. And then if I do df.head, now I get the year month day separately in separate columns as numbers. Now if I do df.d types, these are all integers. They are these are no longer dates because you have extracted extracted it out. Right? Okay. So can we do more? Okay, let's again look at B. This was b, b dot day underscore of week. We have something like this, or maybe something like this. Yes. Okay. Day of week is five. So I think in Python, uh, I think day of week starts from, from Monday as uh, zero, I guess. Yeah. So fifth means it'll be someday. So let me check b dot. Uh, Day name. Is there something called day name? Yes. Day underscore name bracket will give me Saturday. So Saturday is five. Sunday is six, which Mondays is zero. Zero so six, zero to six will be seven days. So basically the default index, this number which is applied to it, the day starts from Monday. So Monday will take the day of zero, and then Tuesday will take one and so forth. So day of week, day name is there. Do we have month name? Let's see. Oh, It's okay to not remember syntaxes. Okay. Looking at the error itself, we get to know what to do. August, great. So I have three things to extract more now, right? The day number, the day name, and the month name. So similarly, I'll do this. Day of week, day name, and month. Very simple, guys. You can get the same name, no problem. You can call it as the number also. That's up, that's up to you. So now do df dot head. Oh, okay. I made a mistake here. So this should have bracket. Ah. Now you can see I, I extracted three more things: day of week, day name, and month name. And this gives this is really useful information, right? Now, if I want to, uh, you know, uh, create another column which indicates that is it a weekday or a 
uh, weekend day, right? So we will be able to understand that, okay, what is, suppose if I have a, another column called sales here, then I can find out the weekly sales, the monthly sales, right? And then also I can find out the weekend sales versus the weekly sales for every month, right? Using group by. So all these kind of deep diving into details we can do once we know how to analyze time series data. And it's very important when you're trying to, uh, coming from a sales background, right? So this, these things are very important because sales data, right? All other profit or financial data, stocks, all these are data sets which depend on time, right? Okay, even while doing the COVID analysis, right? Uh, we, we we always try to, you know, when you look at newspapers or when you look at the news, we always get a figure, you know, weekly increase, daily increase, monthly increase. All these are calculated based on the time series data, okay? So, right. So let's have, try to think of a logic first. Okay, I'll use the lambda function to apply the logic. Uh, what does the logic say? The logic will basically say if B is equal to is equal to, you know, Saturday, or B is equal to is equal to Sunday, then my X will become what weekend. Else, any day will become. Weekday. That's it. This is the logic. So I can simply create a function of DEF, and we know that function has needs to be indented, right? And return of x uh, weekend logic. I can call it right, and I can take in D as input. All right. Now, having said that, I run this and then use the same lambda function with my own customized function. So let me call this day type. Okay. And then do x of x should be replaced with weekend logic of. And this is a iterator, you can call it i also, no problem. Let's see if this works df dot head you can see here okay if d is equal to equal to saturday or d is equal to equal to sunday it should be weekend right i think no this is wrong okay it should be the day name right i use the wrong i use this logic on the wrong column that's why it was not showing anything okay now you can see here that saturday is weekend Wherever you will see other days, it will be weekday. Very simple. Okay. Okay, great. So once we have this information, you can see what level you can extract information if you if you enable Python to understand it's a date time format. Just like we have pandas date time, I also shown you one more date time module where I can generate today's date, exact date. So now today's date is on you know, this date. 15th of May 2022, uh, in the evening, 6.48 with 56 seconds. Now, if I run it again, this will become 6.49. Right, see? 18 means it's after 12 p.m. And this is milliseconds. So this is called as timestamp, guys. Sometimes we use this timestamp in deployment to indicate when was the code run, at what particular point of time was it exactly run, right? And whenever we in fact upload files to any location like ST or server, we attach this timestamp with the file name so that we get to know, you know, when exactly it was being run. I can generate more days also if I do this plus time delta of five. I think it's inside date time only if I'm not wrong. Yes, if I include five. If I add five more days, it becomes 20, 15 plus five, exactly from now. So I can generate uh, days, you know, I look at the horizon for, you know, time series forecasting, especially in forecasting demand and everything. We, you know, do the forecasting for the next seven days or eight days cycle, right? Or weekly cycle or monthly cycle. That is where we generate these dates in an automated way using time delta from date time module. Okay, guys. So this is all for today.
Thank you so much for looking at the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something valuable. Stay tuned for more videos like this. We'll have another session on date time objects in Pandas, where we try to see if the date time format is not of the suitable format just like this, how will you make Python understand that? If it is written as 25th top, 25th dash, something like this, how will you make Python understand this is actually August 08? If we have a data frame, which is like this coming from an Excel sheet. So in the next video, we'll try to evaluate such uh, data type as well. Okay, so stay tuned. Please not forget to share, like, and subscribe. See you in the next video.